So let's have a look at some common techniques for cutting transitional edges on geometry under subdivision. And we'll also have a look at some of the common scenarios that you'll run into when trying to sharpen edges and how you can resolve any issues that you come across. Now I have this random shape here and we obviously have three main transitional edges and we can see these here as I have them assigned to a selection tag. Now obviously we have a few places in this mesh where the edge flow isn't exactly perfect. The first example would be this bottom edge here as we have this five-sided pole and obviously you can see when I try and select this edge we get a termination here and I would have to manually select these. I could try shift double clicking but you can see that I have another three-sided pole so I have to just do this holding shift again. Now the one tool that this pole is going to play havoc with is the knife tool. And when we cut edges like this, we're using the knife tool in loop mode because we want to make quite sweeping cuts. We don't want to have to do this manually. And you can see I have like a good edge flow going around this surface. So cutting this with the knife tool here to add a control cut is pretty easy. Now when I get to this top surface, I start to run into a problem with the knife tool and that is because my edge flow is going in the wrong direction. I have this edge flow moving across the top here and it's basically kind of running around this feature here. And you can see because these two edge flows are similar, we get this continuous edge through here. Now this edge flow isn't really doing us any favours for loop cutting around this area here. So we're kind of going to have to think of another strategy with the knife tool to take care of this. Now one solution would actually be to split this surface into two distinct edge flows. One that ran along this edge and one that ran along this edge and this would be very easy to do and I'll show you that a little bit later on but we'll continue with the knife tool scenario for now so what I could do is actually cut the bulk of this control cut with the actual loop tool and if I were to approach the cut from the other end and not this end I can actually start from this edge and just maybe cut this in now two things have happened here one we've created an end on and two, because the knife is proportional, we have this kind of control cut that isn't particularly even. The distance between the edge and this edge is obviously much wider than the distance between this edge and this edge. And this is because this polygon is obviously smaller than this one. So we might have to do a little bit of kind of rejigging with some of our edges in this situation. But for now, that's all good. So let's move in to this area. Now what I'm going to have to do is cut an edge along here and then try and clean up this end gone. Now in order to cut a control cut onto these two edges on this surface, with the knife tool this is kind of manual labour. I would go into line mode and I'll show you three ways that you can do this. Now one drawback of the knife tool is that you can't cut into a polygon halfway through. It will essentially cut the edge over here and add a point, but it won't add a point into this surface. Now in 3ds Max or Maya, this is doable. Um, there's a tool called the Cut Tool, and this will allow you to cut shapes into a polygon surface like this. Now we do have something similar in Cinema 4D, which is the whole mode with the knife tool, and that allows you to cut a polygon hole. But what we would like to do would be to do something like this, and for this to be able to cut this edge in. But unfortunately we can't do that, so we have to approach it from a slightly different way. And what we have to do is actually add an edge into here that we can actually cut into like this and that would get us where we were going and then we would just dissolve that edge 
Now another way we can do this is to cut across this polygon over to here and then cut into here. Go to point mode with our slide tool and then just slide this edge back. Probably the easiest way to approach this though is to actually use the slide tool and grab these edges, hold command or control, and then actually clone this edge in like that and that will give you a very fast result for these kinds of things. Now you may ask why would you even bother showing us the uh, manual knife cut and that is because you know there are some situations where you know knowing how to actually cut these things with the knife is sometimes faster when you're on a roll and you just want to stick with the same tool and you'll be in a lot of manual cutting situations so knowing how to resolve these kinds of problems is quite a good thing to know. So we have this rather nasty end gone here now and all we need to do really is to go into point mode and then just grab our weld tool and if we just click on the screen you can see that this will actually weld these two points to this centre marker and that should resolve our issue. So now we've managed to uh, cut this edge in with our knife tool and if we subdivide, let's raise our subdivision level a bit, we can see we get this nice sharpened transitional edge and it's a good result. So let's try the same thing with this edge going around here. Now you'll notice that I'm in isoline editing mode here and it's very easy for me to select this edge. The problem is when you actually select the knife tool it deactivates isoline editing which is not much help because now I can't actually see the edge I want to cut around and there are certain tools in cinema that don't allow you to work in isoline editing. Uh, so the best course of action here when using the knife tool is to just disable your subdivision. And you can do that if your object is selected just by toggling Q to turn this on and off. So let's grab our knife tool in loop mode. And because we have this continuous edge flow, it's obviously very easy to cut around this feature with the knife. In Q to view our subdivision cut and you can see this does the job pretty well. So coming to this top edge we have a similar scenario that we had here where we have a three-sided pole and this is caused by this edge flow running down here. Now we obviously don't want to cut this because when we subdivide it's obviously going to ruin our curvature. Now it's very easy to cut this edge in but obviously we would have to perform all these manual cuts here and that's just a bit tedious so let's look at another technique that we can use to kind of speed this thing up. Now what I'm going to do is use the slide tool and obviously you saw me do this procedure earlier over here so why can't I just apply that to a whole edge and the answer is well, I can quite easily. If I just select this edge, grab my slide tool, command or control, and clone this edge in, you can see here that the slide tool has actually taken care of this area for me. And it's moved this pole away from this edge. Now obviously this is quite a useful thing when dealing with this sort of geometry. And another good thing about the slide tool is that the distance of our new edge is exactly the same along this whole transitional edge. It's not like the knife tool where it is proportional to the polygon size. It will move this edge away at the same distance along this whole edge and that will obviously give you a more uniform cut and more uniform sharpening. Now we could use this same technique here where we have this three-sided pole and if we command or control and clone in you can see we get the uh, correct geometry along this top edge. Now because we've created these four-sided vertices here and here, both these transitional edges now have continuous edge flow to them. 
So by drawing the poles away, our edges now become even more selectable. And what I could do with the slide tool actually here is grab both edges and slide them at the same time, which can be quite useful too. Now, when you slide an edge like this, you're essentially having to do two operations, but you can do this much quicker still by using the bevel tool in solid mode. And if I select an edge, what solid mode essentially does is slides or clones the edges out in both directions at once. And this is what makes the bevel tool in solid mode probably the best tool for dealing with these kind of transitional edges when making control cuts. So what I could do here is grab all three edges at the same time and just bevel out like so, which is the fastest way of doing this kind of thing. And it works great if you want all your cuts to be the same distance, obviously, if I want varying degrees of sharpness, I would do these edges separately. And we can see the different kind of sharpening results that we get here. Now, the only thing you have to watch out for with the bevel tool is that it doesn't like these kind of edge poles. In fact, it doesn't like poles pretty much full stop, really. And we're getting around this at the moment because our metering is set to uniform. But if we have this set to default and I select this edge, you can see that when I bevel out, it's creating this rather huge mess around here. And this is because it's trying to slide a point out along the five sides of this pole. Now you will run into this with the bevel object or bevel deformer and also the bevel tool on complex 3D geometry where you may have a weird intersection. Now you can obviously get out of this by changing the metering to uniform and it will deal with these edge poles just fine. We'll look at a few um, situations a bit later on where you might find the bevel tool and the bevel deformer just get a bit stumped in general, but we'll come back to that a little bit later. Now, before I was saying it might have been a good idea for me to actually cut two separate edge flows into this top surface, and that would obviously make cutting with a knife tool a lot easier. Now, I could actually do this very easily with the slide tool, and if I take the slide tool, command or control, and I actually slide this edge in quite a ways, you can see that this is actually exactly what it does. Now, I probably need to um, clean this up a little bit. Let's go to point mode here and just slide some points in. But the slide tool is very good at creating dual flows on a surface. And now I obviously have one edge flow running across my transitional edge at the bottom. And I also get to keep a flow around this feature here. So when it comes to cutting with my knife tool, you can see this is actually pretty easy. And I can do this pretty fast. The only real stumbling block with the knife tool will be this top surface here. But I can easily sharpen this edge using the slide tool to create my top cut. And again, we'll get a decent result from this technique. Now, there may be a reason for me not having this dual edge flow happening along this surface. And that may be that I want a very sweeping curve in this whole area around this object. Now, obviously, having an extra edge in the middle of this topology is going to hamper me making a rather large curve, as the distance between this edge and this edge is obviously closer than this edge and this edge. 
So my feature here under subdivision will immediately become tighter like this than it would be if this geometry didn't exist. And if I subdivide, you can see obviously this curve is now a lot smoother. You can see that where we have a right angle in this geometry here, that we get a very particular kind of curve. And maybe we want something that's a bit more shallow and larger than the curve that we're actually getting at the moment around this feature. You can see it's not very sweeping. So how would we manufacture that kind of transitional curvature? Well, for this, we go back and we rely on the bevel tool. And the bevel tool enables us to create geometry which allows us to set our own curvature. And we're not just having to rely on this clunky kind of base mesh. We're actually making our geometry a bit closer to the form that we want. So in this case, I would go to the bevel tool and take it out of solid mode and instead go into chamfer. Then I could possibly set a couple of subdivisions and actually bevel this edge out to create my own kind of curvature. We could probably get away with one subdivision here. Now when we subdivide this geometry, we obviously get quite a different result in curvature becomes a lot more rounded. So this time we're thinking of the bevel tool as a means to create geometry that will enhance a particular kind of curve. Then what I could do is go back to my bevel tool with these two other edges selected and solid chamfer these. And now under subdivision we have this kind of effect which again is quite nice so don't be afraid to use the bevel tool if you find that your geometry isn't giving you the right kind of curvature now you have to remember that the bevel tool is an extremely flexible tool you can create all sorts of shapes with it from the basic rounding to user shapes which is done using a spline and you can also load a spline into it to create any kind of profile that you like. Now just using the basic tools, we could take our depth to minus 100. Let's up our subdivision one. And we could create a feature that looked like this. Then we can now grab these transitional edges Go back to solid mode, give ourselves a nice tight control cut around these edges, subdivide, and now we have this kind of effect. Let's raise our subdivisions to three, and you can see you know, now we're getting this kind of feature. So even though we think of the bevel tool creating these kind of bevels, it's also a very, very useful tool to use in conjunction with subdivisions to create all sorts of interesting effects when it comes to these specular edges or transitional curves.